Hi, I'm Vince and I'm converting this shipping container into a tiny house style home office. And the reason is, I'm having a baby, so my current home office is turning into a nursery. In the previous episode we chose a container and in this episode we're moving it onto my property. The first delivery attempt happened on a very snowy, blistery day when the delivery company actually picked up the wrong container, which highlights the problem of choosing a container in the UK. But eventually the correct container did arrive and uh, we were able to get it moved. Getting the container delivered um, was a bit of a complicated process. I had to get, get it first delivered onto a field and then it was going to be tracked across to my property later. Now, the delivery companies in the UK are very, very particular. There's a lot of health and safety regulations and a lot of limitations on how they can and cannot operate. Um, but in the end, we managed to get the container off the lorry and onto the field. Now, it was winter time, so they couldn't actually move onto the field with the vehicle, the vehicle itself. So they had to offload from the road and then we'd have to find another way to get it onto the property. I've just set up a brand new Patreon account and to say thank you to some of my first patrons between now and the next video I'll be giving away a set of two vintage block planes so there's a link to that in the description and if you do choose to support me thank you very much for that. The delivery cost usually is about £280 plus VAT in the UK and it doesn't really matter where you are that delivery cost will be about the same. In terms of actually moving the container onto my property which is outlined here in green this is what we're dealing with. We have a, a low hanging power line coming all the way across the front of the property so we can't lift the container directly on from the road. The only access gate to the backfield is all the way across to the left here and we've got to track the container about 150, 200 meters across to the back corner of the garden and then lift it over the hedge into its final resting place. Our local farmers are really great. They clear fallen trees from the roads and they trim all the hedges, but they've also helped me out moving this container and they brought two loaders and they tracked it across their field which was quite muddy, this was in winter, and they actually ruined a fair portion of their field in order to get that container onto my property. And then they only charged me 60 pounds for that, which was great. Now I've lost the footage of them actually fully lifting the container over the hedge, but uh, it was a success. The next challenge on this project was actually to level the container. The site slopes off by about 500 mil from one end to the other, so it uh, needed a fair bit of work. Now. I did find it relatively easy to use a, a heavy duty car jack, this was a, a three ton car jack that I got for a great price because it was bright pink and uh, you know, with a lot of hard work but actually it's, it's quite simple hard work I was able to get the container moved around, shunted around a bit and leveled on some uh, block work. I used a combination of some heavy duty concrete pavers and some breeze blocks as a, sort of a foundation. The concrete slabs just cracked quite quickly, so I will probably have to come back and put in some more permanent foundations. I think what I have now will do the trick, and it certainly seems to be stable, but it doesn't feel like a permanent solution, so that's something that I'll need to revisit. Because I actually had to lift the container up quite high on one end, I ended up blocking out the, uh, the lift and then putting some breeze blocks under the car jack and lifting it up some more. And I just continued that process a few times in order to get the height that I needed, and that worked very well. It was time consuming and again it's heavy hard work but uh, it seemed to work very very well. This was definitely a fairly simple process but um, it was a lot of hard work. There was a lot of lifting and relifting and digging out so that I could place the, uh, the car jack underneath a different section of the container and sometimes the container would shift a little bit from side to side if the um, car jack wasn't perfectly straight and level. And I also ended up using a second car jack just to kind of give it a little bit of a shunt if it was starting to shift off left or right. But in the end, I mean, it's it's totally doable. I did this by myself, um, and look, I can't see any issue with someone leveling, leveling a container using this method. I think it's just perfectly fine. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please do subscribe and like the video if you've enjoyed it. And if you have questions, post them down in the comments below. In the next video, I'll be cutting out some openings for the windows and doors and welding in some steel frames into those openings. I'd like to do a little shout out to another YouTube channel called Odd Life Crafting and that's a young Brazilian couple called Roberta and Duca and they're also doing a shipping container conversion and they're doing a really great video series with lots of in-depth videos, lots of information so if you're interested in shipping container conversions I strongly recommend you go and check them out.